Hello, welcome to the fourth video in the Lab Tainer walkthrough series. Lab Tainers are virtual machine labs provided by the Naval Postgraduate School, built to give students hand-on experience with cybersecurity concepts. These labs and their manuals can be found at mps.edu. In this video, we explore the Lab Tainer Snort, which explores the Snort system used for intrusion detection within a Linux environment. Here we can see the network topology for all devices in this lab. Like any lab tainer, we initialize the lab by running lab tainer and then the lab tainer's name, which for this lab is snort. Once all necessary resources are downloaded, we can simply hit enter to start the lab. With the lab started, you will see three terminals, Mary at workstation two, Hank at remote workstation, and admin at web server. These are the terminals in which you will perform the lab. We can first check that we can start snort. We run start snort sh in the tom at snort terminal to verify that the snort utility is working. No errors were thrown and we were easily able to exit the snort utility using control c. The snort utility has existing rules for detecting suspicious network activity. We can trigger one of the alerts that tracks nmap scans by running sudo nmap www.example.com in the hank at remote workstation terminal to verify that the pre-configured rules are working properly. We can see that the snort picks up the nmap scan request and generates a ICMP ping nmap alert along with other alerts. We can play around with the custom snort rules by adding to the rules located at etc snort rules local dot rules in tom at snort's terminal. We use sudo vim etc snort rules local dot rules to open up the file and add our new rules. Notice that the local dot rules file is initially empty of any rules. We can add our custom rule that generates an alert whenever a TCP packet from any address on any port is sent to any address on any other port in the environment by adding the command alert tcp any any arrow any any message tcp detected and sid 0002 like, like such. Note that the message attribute is set to display tcp detected whenever the alert is triggered and also note that we gave the alert a unique ID of 0002. When we restart the snort utility and run the firefox www.example.com command in the hank at remote workstation terminal, we get flooded with TCP detected alerts in the snort utility console. Receiving an alert every time a TCP request is made does not exactly make our life easier in our hunt for malicious activity. In this task, we take a look at the unprotected business plan found at www.example.com slash plan.html. We want to get an alert every time someone accesses this page. We will take advantage of the fact that the page contains the word CONFIDENTIAL in all caps and look for TCP messages that contain the word CONFIDENTIAL in its body. Like before, we are not concerned with source and destination IP addresses and ports the request is coming from, so we can put any any in those fields. We take advantage of the content to parse the TCP content for the text confidential and throw an alert if the text is found. The full alert is as follows, alert TCP any any to any any, content confidential, message confidential detected, and the same unique ID. Since we are replacing the previous TCP alert, we can reuse that unique ID since we know it's unique. With this new alert added, we can rerun the Snort utility and clear the browser's history and cache for Hank at Remote Workstation. And then, when we refresh the example.com plan.html page, we see that Snort detects the intrusion and give us our custom alert. Being able to detect the text confidential in the TCP contents is great for unencrypted TCP messages. But what happens when it gets encrypted? We test this by changing the URL to make a use of the web server SSL function, adding a HTTPS to the front of the URL to make it https://example.com.html. 
Despite clearing of the browser history and cache, the new link does not trigger our custom alert in the snort utility. No new alerts get created. This is because the contents of the TCD packet have been encrypted, so there is no clear text confidential for us to find in the packet. The solution proposed by the lab is to use the reverse proxy in front of the web server, handling the incoming web traffic and managing the SSL connections, something that is beyond the scope of this lab. When we go to the internal Mary at Workstation 2 terminal and run the nmap command from earlier, we discover that our snort utility does not pick up the nmap scan despite having pre-configured alerts to do so, but only picks up ICMP echo reply and ICMP timestamp reply alerts. This is because the snort component is not configured to identify nmap scans between internal devices as Mary's workstation is not mirrored to the snort component. We can fix this by going over to the Ubuntu at Gateway Terminal and editing the etc slash rc.local script so that the traffic from Mary's workstation is mirrored to the snort component. We add an IP table configuration to route traffic through the snort component at 192.168.3.1 first with the following command, IP tables t mangle a pre routing i lan 2 jt gateway 192.168.3.1. The edit can be seen here. Once edited, we simply run the sudo etc slash rc.local command to apply our new IP table rules. And then we rerun snort and rerun the nmap scan from Mary Workstation 2 to verify that we can now pick up internal nmap scans. As you can see, the nmap scans are now picked up. Running Firefox www.example.com slash plan.html in the Mary Workstation 2 terminal triggers a snort alert because our snort alert does not care where the request for the confidential site came from, only that a request was made. We can adjust the source and destination addresses to apply the following two goals. External access to the business plan generates an alert, while internal access to the business plan does not generate an alert. Some extra tips. When performing this lab, you might encounter a stream of ICMP destination unreachable port unreachable alerts in Snort. When accessing the www.example.com slash plan.html website from Marriott Workstation 2's terminal. This is a common problem Snort operators often run into, and it is usually caused by TCP packets that are not making it through for a multitude of reasons. We can mute the ICMP destination unreachable port unreachable by preventing these TCP packets in the first place. And this is done through editing the IP table in etc rc.local in the Ubuntu at Gateway terminal and adding a new rule of IP tables dash i output dash p icmp double dash icmp dash type destination dash unreachable dash j drop to drop these TCP packets. That way, Snort won't pick them up. Recognizing that the snort alert rules have a general form of alert, protocol, source address, source port, arrow, destination address, destination port, rule options in parentheses, we just have to determine the source address and destination address that we want to alert on. Realizing that all TCP responses will come from our web server located at 192.168.1.2, we can set the source address parameter to 192.168.1.2 24, so that the snort is only alerting in, on TCP responses with confidential from the web server. Determining the destination address is a little more tricky. We have to identify what addresses correspond to external requests 
and what addresses correspond to internal requests. It turns out that all requests by external devices have to leave through the gateway destination of 192.168.1.10. So that is our destination address, parameter 192.168.1.10/24. Internal requests do not go through the gateway, so if Mary at Workstation 2 makes a request, it will have a destination address of 192.168.2.1, which is outside of our filter parameter of 192.168.1.10. When we rerun Snort and attempt to access the website using Hank at Remote Workstation, we see that a confidential detected alert is generated when the website is accessed by this external user. We can also see that no additional confidential detected alert is generated when the website is subsequently accessed by internal user Mary at Workstation 2. This task had one additional requirement, and that was the external or internal use of MMAP will continue to generate an ICMP MMAP ping alert. Without changing anything, we test detection of MMAP scan performed by Hank at a remote workstation, and it is successfully detected. We do the same for Mary at workstation 2, and we can also see that that is successfully detected as well. And that's all for the Snort Lab. Make sure you exit the lab terminal and run Stock Lab in the original terminal to save your work. See you in the next lab!